Are you unhappy because your boss doesn't give you the recognition or the salary that you deserve at work? In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to beat the boss. Hey, it's Josiah, your success consultant. And in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to get what you want at work. So if you're serious about your success and you want to get paid what you're worth, I want you to go ahead and subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be doing a lot of videos about how to command the raise, how to be able to manage your negotiations and how to be able to get a promotion so that way you can take things to the next level. All right. So in the last episode, we discussed how to develop your dream career. And to be honest with you, you're going to spend a large portion of your adult life at work. You're going to be taking care of paying the bills. You're going to be taking care of family. You got responsibilities. And so knowing that you're going to be spending so much time at a job, you don't want to just take any job. You don't want to just work to work. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how to make the most out of the job that you're at. I'm going to show you how to beat the boss, because for most people, the reason why they don't like their job is because they run into issues with their boss. Their boss doesn't respect them. They don't give them a raise. They don't acknowledge all of the work and hard hours and overtime that they put in. So if you want to beat the boss, here are the three things that you need. The first thing that you need to understand is how to under promise and over deliver. So when you under promise and over deliver, what does that mean? That means that when you're applying for a job, you go on an interview and then if you end up getting the job, there's also another phase where there's a series of expectations goals or objectives that are outlined for you. In some jobs, you participate in this process of goal setting for yourself and your uh, employee performance. And in other times, it's just pretty much handed to you. Regardless of the two, you need to be very clear about what is stated on the front end. Because whatever has been stated on the front end, you need to start finding opportunities to under promise and over deliver. So when it comes to the things that have been stated, you want to make sure that you're checking the box on all of the expectations. OK, follow me here. You don't want to tell the boss on day one that you're going to give 500 percent, because if you tell the boss on day one that you're going to give 500 percent and then you give 450 percent, they're still going to get disappointed, even though you're giving over 100 percent. So it's a lot better for you to reach those expectations at 100 percent and then go 400 more points over than for you to start off by walking in saying, yeah, I, I'm going to be a beast. I'm going to go all out. I'm going to outperform everybody. Don't tell that to your boss. Make sure, yes, that you are meeting the expectations. Make sure that you're presenting yourself well. I'm not telling you to half ass the interview. I'm telling you to make sure that you do what you need to do to get your foot in the door. But don't shoot so high that there's no way for you to now over deliver. OK, leave a little bit in the tank. Leave a little bit unsaid. You want to walk in being knowledgeable, but you want to have an element of surprise. So you got to know what the expectations are from day one, from the expectations that you set and the expectations that are set before you. So whatever roles are outlined for you, now is a time where you have to set private goals for yourself to say, how do I go above and beyond? And it doesn't have to be big things. It could just be little small, tiny things that you do every single day that's above and beyond the call of duty. I'll give you a prime example. Let's say right now that you're working as a receptionist and you have basic responsibilities like uh, typing at a certain word processing speed, being able to answer the phone at a particular time. Just a basic list of expectations. If the boss tells you, OK, you got to be able to knock out three phone calls in 10 minutes, you want to sign on for that. You want to let them know that you're more than capable of getting that job done. But what you want to do and set a goal for yourself is you want to be able to knock out six calls in 10 minutes. You're not going to tell the boss that. Why? Because if you go into the front of this job opportunity and you say, yeah, I'm going to knock out six calls. What's going to happen is they're going to hold you to that high standard every single time. So you breaking your back, overdoing it, that becomes the norm. 
And I've worked at different companies where I've seen that happen. I'm speaking to you from experience. Y'all gotta remember, I'm a campus recruiting manager. I've hired dozens and dozens and dozens of people over the years. And I can tell you that when you overshoot yourself, it only makes it harder for you to get more money on the back end. It's better for you to be able to meet expectations when you're speaking with the boss and then go all out once you get your foot in the door. So you wanna be able to outline right now for yourself how you're going to under promise and over deliver. Here's number two. What you wanna be able to do is you wanna be able to document, 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 document. You gotta document your performance like a madman. What happens is this, you will work yourself into the ground for a boss all year and you don't write it down. You might only think and remember about a couple things that you did throughout the year when you might have did a hundred different things throughout the year that was impressive. And guess what? If you're not writing it down and you don't care, don't expect your boss to care. Don't expect your boss to remember and they're managing a staff of people just more than yourself. So what you want to think about is, how do I document every single thing that I do? Because here's how you end up getting that raise. Here's how you end up getting the promotion. Here's how you end up getting your way with the boss. When you step to the boss, you're going to be able to speak in terms of a very detailed performance. I'm going to tell you about a trick that I had when I was working in corporate America. You know, I was working in this huge corporation filled with people from all over the world. I'm talking about brainiacs, people that was just on the computer day and night, expert coders, expert engineers, expert mathematicians and software designers. But every single employee evaluation, I was always at the top of my staff. And the reason why was not because of the fact that I was so much smarter than the rest of the staff, it wasn't because of the fact that I was out working the staff around the clock. There was a little bit of work being put in, no doubt. But where I really stood out was my ability to document and explain my accomplishments much better than everybody else. And that's just kind of a general rule as you're trying to get yourself established as you climb the ladder. A lot of times when you're trying to climb the ladder, it's not so much about who is the hardest worker or whose skills is the best, it's who looks best in presentation, who looks best on paper, who does the best job at being able to persuade and convince other people that they're able to really be able to stand out from among the pack. You wanna be able to present yourself like a superstar because what good is it if you're working like a superstar but nobody's there to acknowledge you because you fail when it comes time for you to document? Every single time you had an employee evaluation, don't wait for the boss to tell you how you did for the year. You need to be showing the boss exactly what you did really before the evaluation. Because you can go into an evaluation and the boss might be like, okay, you did A, B, and C. But if you would have just taken the time to put together a well-polished presentation, a summary of all of the things that you've been doing throughout the year, then guess what? If you presented that to your boss, whether it was in person or whether it was via email, you would be surprised how much the boss would review that and say, wow, I've been underestimating this guy. I've been overlooking this brother. I'm going to now have to give him a raise. I'm gonna to have to give him a promotion because when you look at it on paper, when you look at the results, he has gone far past that of his peers. But a closed mouth won't get fed. So if you're not documenting, you're not winning. That leads me to my third point. You're gonna take the documentation that's showing how you have over-delivered in all of your roles. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna use this as leverage during your discussions, okay? This is the third piece right here. This is you speaking with the boss privately. So in some companies, you may have one-on-ones with your manager. If you don't have one-on-ones with a manager, you need to start working some type of rapport with your manager. You wanna be able to stay on top of everything. You wanna be on point. So for every one-on-one -on -one that you have with your manager, whether it's once a week, once every other week, I recommend one of those two uh, cadences in terms of time. I'm telling you, go to every one-on-one -on -one with 
your accomplishments for the week, your objectives for the week, as well as a series of questions to that boss. That's how you outsmart the boss. The third thing is about you outsmarting the boss. Because remember, when the boss comes to you, they're thinking that they're the ones that's the smart one, right? They're thinking they're the ones that's in charge, but they're not focused on you like you're focused on you. They're not thinking about your accomplishments like you're thinking about your accomplishments. So when you step in front of that one-on-one, -on -one, you need to already have printed out on a sheet of paper. You need to already have an agenda for what you wanna share in the meeting. You wanna have that agenda basically outline in terms of what you've done leading up to this week since your last one-on-one, -on -one, what things you plan to accomplish by the end of this week or before your next one-on-one, -on -one, and then you need to start thinking about, well, what questions are thought-provoking that are gonna give me value that I can ask my boss? And just by you being able to have questions, even if you can't think of any right now, take the time to think of some thought-provoking questions because you want to keep the boss on their feet. Your boss is going to be so surprised and so overwhelmed, they're going to have to respect your work ethic. And respect is going to breed trust. When you have trust with your boss, that's when you're going to be able to walk in and say, you know what? I want to make a little bit more money. Here's why. And instead of you just being any Joe Blow that's got your hand out asking for a dollar, they're going to trust you enough to know that it comes from a valid place. That boss, because of the fact that you're making that boss look good, they're going to be a lot more inclined to vouch for you because you're bringing a lot more to the table. So here's one thing that I want you to think about. I want you to think about the opportunity for you to be able to actually do this in your job because this is one of the first steps on your road to building an empire, okay? And we're gonna talk a lot throughout these videos about building an empire. So right now, what I really want you to be able to do is just simply subscribe. Because when you subscribe, you're gonna be able to have the opportunity to check out more videos where I'm showing you how to be able to effectively negotiate, how to be able to dominate your employee evaluation review and how to be able to structure things around the job so you're the one that's calling the shots at the end of the day. All right, so just to recap the top three points in this video, under promise and over deliver. Document, document, document. Outsmart your boss during the private discussion. So right now, to make sure that you're serious about following these steps, that you're serious, about not just working a job to have a job, but to thrive in your job, to dominate in your career, to be a game changer at what it is that you do. I want you to leave me a comment right now and say, I'm gonna beat my boss. If you're serious, if you're really trying to make moves and make things happen, write it down. Because when you write it down, it deepens the impression in your mind. It's getting you more focused on it because now I'm gonna keep you accountable as I'm working with you. I work with people all throughout the year, hundreds and hundreds of people. And the first thing that I can tell you on how to get ahead is to have everything fully documented. So I want you to leave me a comment. I want you to tell me I'm going to beat my boss. And then I want you to tell me how you're going to do it. What things are you gonna take from today's video to beat your boss? Because in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to outperform every other person that's on your staff. I'm going to show you everything you need to know about time management so you can get a lot more done in a lot less time. I'll see you there.